What are the legal implications of the Mail and Guardian's decision to publish this report? Well, actually, <coughs> there are no legal implications in the sense that it nullifies the report or it, place the, it places the report on a, a bad legal footing because the whole process through which the public protector operates and prepares the report is her own invention. It's not actually set out in the constitution or in the legislation in the kind of detail. Uh, she has a, a process that she follows. Uh, obviously, it is supposed to be a confidential process until such time as the final report is made public and that might have consequences um, but uh, uh, that of, of, of a political nature, but in a legal sense, uh, it doesn't in any way affect the, the standing of the report. The, the newspaper appears to be arguing in its own defense that the public has the right to know that the access to that right has been delayed for long enough and this was what it had to do in the interests of serving the public. Well, you know, there's the, it's a kind of public interest defense, of course, which we all know is one of the big fights that was fought uh, when the secrecy bill uh, was debated. And I personally think that they might have uh, a case. I mean, uh, I think that uh, if there is clear evidence that there, is, uh, that there, is a, there are attempts made to stop evidence from maladministration and dishonesty from coming out, then it is the duty of the newspapers to expose that. Whether they've done so prematurely, I wouldn't want to say, but I think newspapers in a democracy have a role in exposing maladministration and dishonesty, especially when there are clear attempts to try and hide this from the public who ultimately has the right to know. What, what, what if the argument was put forward that the newspaper has jumped the gun here, that uh, there's nothing to suggest that Tuli Madonsela would not have, after having uh, uh, absorbed the objections uh, and, and feedback of the implicated parties I involved, uh, and, and then uh, come up with a final report. Uh, there's no evidence to suggest necessarily that the public wouldn't have had access to the final report. Um, that is so, except, of course, that in the, um, when the, the club, uh, police and the security cluster ministers uh, engaged with the Tuli Madunsela and took her to court, one of the threats they made was that unless she changes the report drastically um, and takes our, take out all the things that they claimed were security-related evidence, uh, they were going to go back to court and they're going to force her to do so. So they uh, abrogate for themselves the, the, the power actually to censor the report in, in effect. So if they were going to actually uh, implement those threats that they set out in legal papers, then the Mail and Guardian would obviously be on very strong footing. Very interesting indeed. Has this prejudiced President Jacob Zuma? <laughs> well, the you know, um, obviously the president hasn't had time now, uh, although I'm sure he has been told what is in the report because his ministers would have told him, but he hasn't had time to engage with the public protector um, and to, to say maybe that some of the findings were wrong, to, to make arguments why not. And in that sense, it's always a problem when you have a, a, a tentative report, a draft report, and not a final report uh, to be made public because those affected are obviously embarrassed if they are implicated in the report and the, if the findings can still be changed because it is only a draft. So in that sense, yes, he has been disadvantaged. But if, on the other hand, it is true, as the public protector found, that the president has indeed misled parliament and his, that his claims that uh, he's, him and his family paid for all the non-security-related upgrades at his Nkandla home, if that is true, then this, that's quite a shocking finding and then the president regardless of when the report is actually made public, would be really, or should be at least in a democracy, be in real trouble. Professor Pierre de Force, thank you very much for your insight into that story. But still ahead, post office workers are to... News that moves. ENCA.com.